have a question for you this morning. Where is your security? Where is your security? The scripture bears record that the saved are not just in the arms of God, but we're in the palm of God. And do you know, he says, no man can take them out of the palm, out of his hand. No man can remove. I had someone say to me one time, yeah, but that don't mean I can't get myself out. I said, well, then you're not a man. Because the scripture says, no man. We are secured in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that a blessed thought? Amen. 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 It certainly is. Visitors, we're so glad to have you with us today. Amen. We pray that uh, you'll be blessed by being a part of the service. I've got a favor to ask of you, and that's this. You should have gotten a program, a bulletin, when you came in this morning. And if you would, there's a little welcome section in there. Take just a moment, fill it out, and drop it in the offering. I say in the offering plate, in the offering receptacle, which is out in the vestibule, or you can give it to one of the ushers. Be, be just as good. We also have some church members back with us today. It's been a while since you've been here. I understand that one of our ushers has already asked you to fill out a visitor's card. So <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't identify who you are. So it's just good to have you, Bobby. Good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brother Bobby, when he's not here, he and his wife have been struck down with COVID for some time. And he's well over it. He, he told me back some time ago that he wasn't. He wasn't coming back to the service until he had spent quite a bit of time being over it. So we're glad for his thoughtfulness of others. All right, we're glad to have those that are viewing us through electronic means as well. This is Midway Baptist Church. Let's go forward in a word of prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for the opportunity that you've given us to be in your house. Another opportunity to come together and worship you. We pray, Father, that our worship today will be acceptable unto you. Father, I pray today that you will speak to each of our hearts, not just those of us that are assembled here in the sanctuary, but to those that may be viewing as well. We pray, Father, that you'll speak. Lord, that we'll be receptive to what you say. And Lord, not only would we be receptive to what you say, but we'd be determined to do what you say. For the lost, that they'll be saved. For we that are Christians, we'll draw closer to you. Father, for those that are going through difficulties, Lord, that they'll be encouraged. Whatever the need may be, speak to that need. And may they receive what you say. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it. Amen. Amen. Brother Jimmy. Well, good morning. Good morning. God is good all the time. All the time. Good. See if I remember correctly, I read over in, I think it was Psalms 34 this week, it said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. All right. If you've had or going to have a birthday during the month of August, come forward. And also, if you had a birthday in July, come forward, because we, we didn't do July. <laughs> So, July, August, birthdays, and anniversaries, come forward. church don't you know uh, in my in my forgetfulness on this kind of thing brother keith we came up with a solution i could just call everybody's gonna have a birthday this year to come forward and that way we'll never forget right all right if, let's do our anniversaries first all right here we go happy anniversary to you happy anniversary Let's 
do our birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I have a rebirth day tomorrow. Yeah. I'm going to try to give a Reader's Digest version of it, Pastor. I'm going to write a novel. But i got to tell you about it. I'm excited about that. August the 7th, 1960. In a little old church. I start to tell you bad news. That doesn't matter. It was Baptist church. It was the first night of the week-long revival. It was raining. It was storming outside. And my mama took me and my brother my little baby sister from church. First Sunday night of a week long, about back when they had some services, not only at night, but they had them in the morning too. And I was the first product of that. I sit back here about where Brother Ellis is. They have a little church house. And I can't tell you who preached that night. I can't tell you that. I can tell you thank you for but something got a hold of me. I heard you tell you. I felt that drawing. Yes. Yes. And I give that invitation. I sit back there and I, my claw, the nine year old boy, uh -huh. and I, my, I, I held on to that view, that old painted bench, we call it. We call it. I held on to that thing and I, and I made God a promise there. I'll go during the chorus, but not this first verse. Uh -huh. Chorus came up. Lord, I might all wait till that next verse. Yeah. And I can't remember what you sang. It was either, it was either uh, Just As I Am or it was Why Not Tonight. I don't know which. But I kept making God that promise and making that promise. And I kept putting it off and putting it off. But finally, they sung that last verse, of course, and I didn't go. Praise God. No, we don't praise him for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, church is over. And, and I remember people got out in the aisle. There wasn't a whole bunch of people there because it was storming that night. But anyway, uh, I remember the kind of ooey gooing over my little baby sister that was less than two years old and all that stuff. And I, and I stood in that pew, and that calling had drifted away. Terrible feeling. Terrible feeling. Little nine year old boy. I think my theology consisted of John 3 16, and, and I remember my school principal taught us something about the trust of others. said, What was it? I can remember what that is now. But anyway. I didn't have much theology. I didn't understand things, but I just knew that something was drawing me. And anyway, I was standing there in the pew, and this guy that some of y'all know who I'm talking about, some of them, some people made fun of him, to be honest with you. This dude, he's a preacher over in Huntsville, and he dressed like Colonel Sanders. White suit, white shirt. I think, matter of fact, did he marry you and Barbara? Yeah. J. Otis. J. Otis King. J. Otis did things like he preached from the rooftop one time. I remember that. But anyway, I don't know when the Lord just called him over there or he was watching me, but he come over and, and, and he led me to Christ that night. <laughs> now, after after that, I'm trying to get through the preacher as fast as I can. I'm sorry. But things, I'm going to back up and tell you something else too. But first, I'll tell you this. That right after that, after everything settled down, went out there to the church pew, uh, church steps, a big old lot of steps going up that church, sat out there and that storm had passed by. It passed by a day too. I took a big old deep breath and that was the freshest breath there I have taken before or since. So clean. Amen. But I remember that after that I accepted Christ that night that people gave the ground and some amazing grace. Uh, yeah. It had a different meaning after that. Yes. yes. It has a different meaning today. Yes. Do you have that? Yes. Yes. Does that song mean something to you? It's all of God's amazing grace. We're going to sing that this morning. Page 104 in the Baptist symbol. Let's stand up and we'll sing. I don't know how many stanzas. We're going to sing 104 in the Baptist symbol. Amazing grace.
children and young folks, we Pam and Tina in the back to go to your special <laughs> service. Amen. Amen. Brother Jim, on more than one occasion, uh, has shared so many similarities between his path in life and my path in life. And how that God, unspeknowing to either one of us, had allowed those paths to uh, cross, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this morning he shared something else. And another <clears throat> similarity. In 1960, I accepted Christ. Amen. To the hymn, Why Not Tonight? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to be able to think and to know uh, where you were at and how it happened, or at least what happened with you yeah. when you accepted Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I still don't know how he does that. I know he does it through what Jesus Christ did, but exactly how he goes with inside of us and seals our soul and our spirit, that's a miracle. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, good singing this morning. Good singing this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim, I thought you was going to run over at Rooster was trying to make it out behind you up here this morning. <laughs> 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 Brother Jim probably doesn't know what I'm talking about, but nevertheless. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, and I hope that you do, I want you to turn to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. I'm going to be sharing with you a message this morning entitled, Take Heed to Yourself. Take Heed to Your Self. I was reading, uh, and you know, what you read on the internet, you can always trust it, right? <laughs> always true. Always trust it. But I think what I read here and jotted down probably can be trusted. Uh, how well did you take care of yourself? I read there were nine things that you can do that would prolong your life here. Nine things you could do. And there may be more. Uh, and some of these you might say are not applicable to you. But I thought it interesting. It was in time tips for staying healthy and maintaining good health. Number one. Exercise. Exercise. We don't say that it can benefit you both physically and mentally. Since this past January, I've had the privilege of having uh, Brother Al Long uh, try to teach me how to do this the right way. And I, whether you can tell it or not, I can tell it, it has helped me physically. It's the mental part that I've got a problem with. I'm not sure I've progressed that. But exercise. Number two, eat better. Eat the right kinds of food. Uh, I don't know how well you do that, but uh, I'm telling you, I've had a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this one's not applicable. If you smoke, try to quit. Uh, some of you probably have smoked in years past. You've quit. I don't know, maybe some of you still smoke. Uh, but uh, according to this article, uh, it can help you if you quit. Number four, get enough sleep. Number five, stay hydrated. Drink water and drink lots of it. And I hope this one doesn't apply to any of you. Limit your alcohol intake. <laughs> Not the first amen. This is, this is <laughs> serious business right here now. <laughs> Number seven, have regular checkups with your doctor. Number eight, 
manage stress levels. As I read that, I said, you've never pastored a church. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, know your numbers. Now let me explain that one. Know what your blood pressure is. Know about your cholesterol levels. Other important, important numbers, blood sugars, others. All of this can help you maintain good health. Now I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. But I don't know that I'd get a whole lot of people if I were to say, how many of you do all nine of those things? Or had done all nine of those things? Someone might say, well, preacher, what's that got to do with being in church, learning about God, hearing his word, getting instruction? What, what has that got to do with it? Here's my point. Were you interested in what I said? Whether you did it or didn't do it? Amen. Yeah, I was. I think we all want to know what can I do. Whether we do it or not, we want to know what can I do to live longer. I don't believe any of you are suicidal. I hope that you're not. <laughs> Most people want to live longer. Amen. And so it's not a bad thing to know what can I do. Well, let me bring it home. I'm afraid that amongst Christian people there's a misconception about the well-being of our spirituality. A misconception about our sense of spirituality. We will take heed, especially if you go to a a, a a doctor uh, of, of the flesh and you go in that doctor comes out and he says I got bad news for you 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 perk up I mean what is this bad news what do I need to do about it whether we do it or not that that I guess remains to be seen but you know that just as our physical sense needs checking up on our spiritual sense needs checking up on as well. And I'm afraid that too many Christians have got their idea about spirituality all mixed up. Some seem to think that getting saved is the only thing they need to do. Or some Christians think that's the only thing that I needed to do. Granted, it is the top priority of what needs to be done or what should have been done. But my friend, it's just the starting point of the journey. Amen. Just the starting point of the journey. Just like when you were born. Just like when I was born. Aren't we thankful that we had parents that didn't just throw us outside and say, it's up to you now. Amen. Aren't you glad you had someone <laughs> tending to your needs? And helping those needs be met. Yes. It's made us into what we are today. And I know some of you thank your parents for that. Some of you blame your parents for that. <laughs> but you see, our physical, our physical, the flesh, needed more than just being born. Amen. It's taken steps along the way. So it is from a spiritual standpoint. Just a little background, then we're going to read the scripture. Paul, the Apostle Paul, he had went to Ephesus. And uh, at Ephesus, he stayed some three years. Paul left Ephesus after there was a uh, uprising. See, Paul had preached to them about Jesus Christ and how that they needed to turn to the true God, the living God, how they needed to turn away from their false gods. And boy, this, this message really upset some businessmen in Ephesus. They were 
those that worked with silver and made the little statutes of their gods and their goddesses. And they got very angry about this. And they even caused a big uproar in the city. Well, anyway, after this sort of quieted down, Paul left Ephesus. He went to Macedonia. And then he went to Greece, where he stayed for approximately three months. And there in Greece, the Jews that seemed to follow Paul everywhere he went, although they may have been a few steps behind, they followed Paul stirring the pot. Y'all know what stirring the pot means, right? I mean, have you ever turned to your spouse and said, quit stirring that pot? You weren't talking about them pinto beans. It was on the stove. <laughs> You're talking about constantly bringing up something to cause confusion. And that's exactly what these Jews were doing. Following Paul from place to place to place, stirring the pot. And so after they plotted against Paul, I believe they were literally trying to kill Paul. Paul went back to Macedonia. Then he went on to uh, Troas, then to another place, and then to a little place called Miletus. Paul intentionally bypassed Ephesus. Miletus was about, some say 30 miles, some say 50 miles south of Ephesus. And Paul's route really would have been shorter if he went to Ephesus, but he didn't do it. He bypassed it. He went to this little place, or not really little, because this was a modern place. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it was a big colony. This particular, uh, or the people of Miletus had been responsible for uh, finding, founding many colonies. So Paul goes there. And then while he is at Miletus, he sends messengers those 30 or 50 miles back to Ephesus. And he says, tell the elders at Ephesus, I need to talk to them. And so they come to where Paul is at. That's where we're going to start our reading. Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 17. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy. Yes. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have some preaching, I have gone preaching, the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Listen carefully to these next words. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit 
has made you overseers. To shepherd, or that is to feed, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Bow with me just for a moment. Father, for the next few minutes, would you lead God direct in this message? I pray for the recall of the message, and I pray for the recall of thy word. Lord, that we may minister to these folks and to ourselves and to those that are viewing us. Lord, so that we will realize the importance of taking heed to our spirituality taking heed to ourselves. There are major reasons why we need to do this. So help us, Lord, to understand the truth of it and what we need to do. And I pray and I ask that all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul recounts his ministry to the church at Ephesus, to the people of Ephesus. He tells how that he had kept nothing back from them. I believe he was following some instruction that he gave to Timothy when he said, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. I believe the apostle Paul did that at Ephesus. He said, I held nothing back that was helpful. I've heard people jokingly and some not so jokingly say, Preacher, you got all over my toes this morning. Well, if that's true, I miss my mark. I was aiming for your heart. Amen. I heard a lot of people say, you really got on to me today. And some people have even got mad. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I could ask these pastors to stand up that are in our congregation and testify to some of the ill feelings that have been brought towards them for them standing on the word of God and preaching God's truth. Amen. Well, two of them said amen. I don't know what's wrong with the other two. <laughs> no, they nodded their heads. <laughs> yeah. Folks get angry, get mad at you for proclaiming the truth. Paul said, I held nothing back from you. I let you have it. I gave you the whole counsel of God. We need men today. We need people with backbone today. As Brother Jim was sharing in our Sunday school lesson this morning about what happened in Jeremiah's day? We need people that will stand up for the word of God and proclaim the truth of the word of God. Amen. That's what Paul did. You see, people getting mad at you is not anything new. I mean, <clears throat> Paul had them trying to kill him. I never had but one man threaten to shoot me. But I pulled a deacon in front of me. <laughs> Truth with my hand. <laughs> we need people unafraid to proclaim the whole counsel of God. We need it, my friend. We need it just as Paul was delivering it to them because they needed it. We need it. Did you notice what Paul said the reason for all of this was? He said, because I know that when I leave you, there are going to be, there are going to be vicious wolves that are going to come in among you. I know that there's going to be false teachers and preachers.
scriptures that are going to rise up within your congregation and they're going to fill your heads with nonsense, fill your hearts with that which is wrong. Therefore, take heed to yourself. He says, I proclaim it to you. I taught you publicly. I went into your house and taught you. Testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Paul, why'd you do all of that? That seems like that would be discouraging to see so many hear your words, see your actions, but then give deaf ear and deaf hearts to what you've said. Paul went on to tell them why he was doing it. So that I may finish my race with joy. Yeah. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, pay special attention to that. For the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, I was sharing with someone just this past week about an incident that happened to me and others that were with me when <clears throat> years ago when our ministry was evangelistic style. This particular man was in part of a singing group. We met him <clears throat> and uh, I mean, we were just blown away figuratively, blown away by the sound of their PA system. Afterwards, I went up to him and asked him why. How in the world do you get that kind of sound? He said, I built them. I said, uh, could you help us build something like that? He said, why sure I can. So for a period of time, my brother-in-law, Linda's brother, another young man and myself spent many hours in the basement of his house as he was constructing these fantastic speakers. But that didn't make me sound no better. <laughs> anyway, we got to telling about things and sharing experiences. And the subject came up about a particular group that we had both been with. And he jumped and I said, what's so funny? I said, you know, that man's a preacher. You know, he said, but he's a preacher. <clears throat> this particular gentleman said to me, he said, let me share something with you. He said, <clears throat> God may have called him to, to sing, but his wife is the one that sent him to preach. <laughs> now, some of you don't grab that, do you? <clears throat> Paul said, I want to finish the ministry that the Lord Jesus gave to me. And my friend, if you're saved, you've got a ministry. Amen. You have a ministry. We need to take heed to ourselves to make sure that we have carried out or are carrying out the ministry to which Jesus has called us to. And I've never found anywhere in the Word of God where that a ministry was cheerleading. Sicking the preacher on. Sicking the deacons on. Sicking the Sunday school teachers on. We have a ministry. Amen. We need to take heed to ourselves so that we may properly conduct the ministry God has given us. Amen. 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 So I want to share with you. I'm just about done with the introduction. I, I want to share with you so that you'll understand you have a ministry first. Something that you need to be taking heed to. Before before Jesus left this world fleshly, he gave something that I'm sure all of you know something about. We call it the Great Commission, don't we? In that Great Commission, Jesus says these words. Go ye therefore. Go. I mean, ministry involves 
energy expended. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, if I ever get around to it, I'll do it. Go, go. We go carry the gospel, right? Yes. We carry the gospel. First two letters of the gospel is go. G-O. Go, Jesus said, ye therefore, and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Last word spoken to his disciples. Go. Are you a disciple? Amen. If you're a Christian, you're, you should be a disciple. Yes. Amen. Yes. And the command is to go. You've got a ministry. Jesus, if I could, if I could uh, summarize this, I'd say this ministry is going and teaching, telling, to helping convert the lost. You can't save the lost. I cannot save the lost. We can introduce them to the one that does the same. Amen. Help converting the lost. Once they are saved, showing them the true meaning of the local fellowship, of the local congregation, of bringing them in to have Christian fellowship, bringing them in to join arms, to join hearts, to join spirits in carrying out the work of the Lord, baptizing them. Yes. And teaching them. Amen. You, you see, getting saved, my friend, is more, or, or being spiritual is more than just getting saved. Right. It is growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And Paul said to the elders which came to him from Ephesus. He said to them, take heed to yourselves. And the reason that he said that was because there was going to come in these terrible, grievous, slaughtering wolves. And people were going to rise up from inside that would try to tear them down. Paul, in writing to Timothy, said this in 1 Timothy chapter 4. For bodily exercise profits a little. I'm very thankful for Dr. Al trying to get me in some kind of physical good condition. I come home sometimes and I say to Linda, she'll say, how'd it go? I said, he killed me this morning. <laughs> I will continue as long as I can. But the Apostle Paul said in writing to Timothy, it just profits a little. Just profits a little. But this is what he said. Let me just start reading it over. And if you want to work, jot this down and read it later. It'd be good reading for you. It's just one verse. First Timothy 4 eight. For bodily exercise profits a little. But godliness is profitable for all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Get this, spiritual enrichment, spiritual en enhancement, spiritual growth, not only will profit you in this life, but in the life to come. Amen. That's what he said. Yeah. I believe that's worth taking heed to. Amen. Don't you? I think it is. Paul admonishes the early church to be on guard concerning so many things, so many things. He admonishes them, watch out for those things that would hinder you spiritually. The Apostle John referred to this. The Apostle John said this in 1 John chapter 2. Verse 14. 
I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you, young men, because you are strong. I, I, I can never recall being told I was strong. Never, I cannot. Back to the earliest days of my memory, I cannot recall being told I was strong. Physically. Now they didn't say I didn't have the mass to be strong. They just said, you know, they just didn't say anything. Are you strong? Are you strong? Are you really? The Apostle John knew some young men that were strong. And just see, and just see in my mind's eye, some people trying to envision those young men, muscle bound. What do they call them? Six packs. <laughs> you know, their arms up and things just boom. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't what John was referring to. When he said they were strong, he was talking about their spirituality. Listen to what he says. Because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you. You want to know what, what makes you strong? The word of God abiding in you. Praise God. Listen to what he, how he wraps it up, so to speak. Having overcome the wicked one. I'm reminded of my Lord just right after he announced his calling and right after he made public who he was. What happened to him? After he's, after he's baptized, what happened to our Lord? Oh, by the way, let me just say this while I'm there. Uh, how many of you believe Jesus was sinless? Amen. Amen. I, I, I'm serious. I want to see yeah. your hands. All right. Put them down. How many of you believe Jesus sinned? All right. Let the record show. Nobody thought Jesus sinned. And you are correct. For the scripture says, He that knew no sin became sin for us. Amen. that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He knew no sin, did he? Yeah. Jesus didn't need to be saved, was he? No. For he was the Savior, right? Amen. Then why in the world was he baptized? If you're one of those that think you've got to be baptized to be saved, I asked you, why was Jesus baptized? That's right. Hmm. After that, immediately off to the wilderness he goes. 40 days. 40 days. Satan comes to him. Satan says, if you be the son of God. Notice he did not say, you're not the son of God. Right? Right? If you be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. What did Jesus say to him? It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. What did Jesus defeat Satan with? The word. The word. Then Satan takes him, sets him up on the pinnacle temple, said, cast yourself down. For it is written that he'll give his angels charge concerning thee, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a rock, against a stone. Tempting Jesus again, wasn't he? What did Jesus say? It is written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. 
Satan carries him up to a high mountain. He says, look at all these kingdoms. I'll give those to you if you'll just fall down and worship me. Jesus says, it is written. He goes on to tell Satan that you'll serve the Lord and only the Lord. My friend, listen. If Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan, you and I need the word of God in us. Yeah, amen. amen. And I've got a lot more to say about that later on. But get this. The apostle John said, you're strong. The word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. We are told, the apostle Paul, to the Elders at the church at Ephesus, take heed to yourself. <clears throat> How do we do that? Some folks might say, I don't know how to do that. Well, I promise you this. If you'll come for the next couple of Sundays, you'll find out how to do it. How to take heed to yourself and what you need to take heed to. We're going to see that. But this morning as we close, I want to ask you this question. Do you see that you have a ministry? Do you see that since you were saved, you've got a ministry? Do you realize that in order for you to carry out that ministry, and listen, this is not just to help others per se, for it will, as someone said, I found out in being a teacher, I learned more than I can ever teach others. Yes. I mean, it helps you grow spiritually. It really does. I'd hope that if my wife were to be asked, Linda, uh, Jerome's been in the ministry now some 48 years. Have you been able to tell any change in him? I, I would hope she'd say yes. And I hope it would be positive change. I mean, if you wanted to turn, she could let me ask me now. She really could. She, she, she says she knows me better than I know myself. But anyway, you see, taking heed to the fact that you've got a ministry and you are striving to perform that ministry will make you a better spiritual person. Don't you want to be better? Sure you do. We're going to find out how to do that. Right now, let's ask the Lord to bless our time of invitation. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be able to share another portion of your word. Lord, it's the Apostle Paul said to the elders of the church at Ephesus, or to the people from Ephesus, take heed to yourselves. Lord, help us to take heed to ourselves. There's reason, there's purpose behind that. I just pray, Father, that as we go through this series of messages, that we will see the benefit of it and that we truly will take heed. If there's someone here today that's not a Christian, Father, help them. Help them. Let your Holy Spirit reveal their lost condition to them. May they feel that strong urge that Brother Jimmy was talking about this morning when he got saved. Let them feel that. Let them experience that. Let them come to the conclusion that they need Jesus in their life. And I pray they do it today. For the child of God that's uh, been saved but hadn't done too much about growing, growing in your grace and in your knowledge, I pray that they'll be convicted of that this morning. Lord, that they'll bow their heads, surrender their hearts, and ask your forgiveness and ask you to help them in that matter. And Lord, whatever the need may be, I pray that we will allow you to meet that need today. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing hymn number four.